Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And in this tutorial, we're going to be discussing formatting numbers, which I failed to do in the last tutorial. That's why there was that cut there. Sorry about that. Um, focus and select, which I'll do at the same time as formatting numbers, message boxes, and a little bit more of it, of course, and the switch statement. So, first of all, with focus, let's do that first. What if you'd like to load your form and already have text there by default and to already have the blinking cursor there automatically? So, let's figure out how to go about doing that. So, let's double click this form and go in our form load event here and just type in the name of the text box, text input dot text is equal to I don't know type here click save and load and it says type here but you still have to click and drag in order to do anything we don't like that so how do you put focus there so in order to put focus there either use the select method or the focus method for some reason this, the focus method does not work for me in the form load event procedure. So I'm going to be using the select for this one, but I'll show you the focus later. So text input dot select and if I save and build now it's highlighted for us automatically so we can do whatever. So that's really really cool. So f um, next is formatting numbers and I'll digress back to focus in, in a moment. So what if you like to uh, format the numbers? Uh, into, I don't know, maybe it to having commas or percentages or currency. Let's figure out how to go about doing that. So let's create our double. Let's uh, call it I don't know, input is equal to convert dot to double and let's see here. Whoops, no, I don't want those. Um, text input dot text. Okay, so let's figure out how to format this. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's actually do what we already know. So if label output dot text equal to um, inputs dot to string, there we go. Well, we already knew how to do all this, so you know you're typing like forty five point six seven eight, and yeah, there it is. Uh, okay, so let's figure out how to format this, and what are the different ways you can format it? So formatting numbers, we have the default, we'll just float, we'll just a normal decimal number. Uh, it prints it exactly the way as you, s you you would normally see it. The next is number and for number, and the only difference between float and number is number will actually put in the commas for you. Like you have one thousand, it'll put the comma after the one. Then comes p for percentages and c for currency. So let's figure out how to format this. So just type in your quotes within the two strings parentheses and let's go number and for number so I'll press F5 and I'll type something like uh, 5825.456 okay so the first thing you'll notice is that we do have the comma there after the 5 so that's nice and then 46 I put 456 what gives well the default number of trailing decimals is 2 so um, and unlike integer division it will round because remember integer division did not round this will so the 56 just became 6 as it rounded up so bear that in mind so if I put this down to a 4 and that's 45 right there so it's just the normal 45 because it did not round up and that's about it so how do you change the number of trailing decimals just put a number right after that like 4 so I click save and I type in I don't know three points seven five I don't know we get three point seven five zero zero so now we have four trailing decimals so let's check out percentages I don't like percentages with decimals so I'll just put the trailing default as zero or that's not the default defaults two um, so if you put in five that should be five percent right nope um, remember percentages are decimals so one whole will be one hundred percent so if you type in like zero point uh, two five we get 25%. But if I put a 3 after that, it's still 25% because I did not allow for decimals. And the last one is currency. I don't put trailing decimals after that because the def default is 2 and we only go to the hundredth place anyways. So I type 449 and we get $4.49. You type in 2, you'll get the $2 still. So that's nice. Uh, then the last thing I'd like to digress back to the focus is after you type in your information and click enter, what if you'd like type here with the focus to go back to the text box? So in our button click, just do text input dot text again. 
is equal to uh, type here and this time I'll use the focus because the focus will work so text input dot focus I click save run I type in 45 and now the type here the text goes back so you can you know you can keep doing that and it'll keep uh, putting it back for you so that's cool uh, now the next thing I'd like to show you are message boxes so um, did you know that I didn't do try catch here but did you not know that you don't only have to have the message box appear uh, if you have an error you can actually have it pop up anytime you'd like so just by clicking this enter button we can have something pop up so the first piece of information is the main body text and it doesn't have to be just one string like this like you could concatenate multiple strings if you'd like like this so I could type in user input colon space concatenation sign the plus sign and then the input but because the input's a number we have to convert it into a string as such there we go then comma then the next piece of information is what goes in the upper left corner so I'll put input and the next thing by default are the buttons I already I've done okay so I'll do yes no this time the icon I'll have it information and then default buttons now notice how there's three here um, that because that's as many as you can have, but for yes and no, we only have two. The default highlighted button, which is what this represents, is always one. So let's do two this time. Also note, if the code's too long, you can just click right here, click enter. Without a semicolon, it will automatically assume that's continuing the same line of code. So indent it for you. So that's really nice. So you don't have to worry about errors. So I'll type in like 45. And it says user input 45 because it says user input and then whatever the input is but since we didn't format it inside this two string it just gives us the normal 45 instead of in the dollar sign and notice how the nose highlight automatically too and you can go between you with your arrow keys okay now what if you like the input to actually go on to the next line well there's a few different ways you can go about doing this is you can either use an escape key which is just the backslash n like that uh... you can separate it if you'd like which is what i'm gonna do you don't have to separate it like I'm doing it, but you can just do it that way. And so you can type in, I don't know, 45. Now the 45 is on the next line. And, or you can use um, something called the environment dot new line. So you click save, and it should do the same thing. So I'll type in, I don't know, 58. And now the 58 is the next line. So that's really, really cool. So that's about it for that. Now the last thing I'd like to show you in this tutorial is um, the switch and I'm gonna make the buttons and stuff while I explain it so the switch basically works just like the um, just like if statements basically uh, and basically what they do is if you know the different outcomes of whatever a user might type in then it will execute a certain piece of code and there's also a default that is optional but you can still put it in there anyways so the first thing I'd like to do is let's go strings first. You can do numbers, uh, but let's do strings first. So string, let's go. I don't know. User input is equal to text input dot text, like that. So in order to do this uh, switch, just type in switch followed by parentheses, opening curly brace and closing curly brace, and the value you want to check for will be this variable right here so it will check to see whatever's in here via this variable so we'll go user input and well let's look at what we have here so the first case we'd like to look for is case just type in case followed by um, whatever you want to look for let's see if they typed in hello or something like that then a colon then not a semicolon a regular colon then enter then execute the code that you like so label output dot text will be equal to y hello to you two. So that would be kind of the response. Then you need to, oh, I need a semicolon. Then you'll need a break. And what the break does is if this case turns out to be true, the break will ensure it doesn't try checking any of the other cases. I don't even think C Sharp will let you create a case without the break statement. But anyways, um, you can also have, and this is optional, a default. And basically what that does is executes whatever code you'd like. 
if none of the above worked. And I don't think you need a brick for this either, but uh, we'll find out. Um, I guess we do. It says cannot fall through, blah, blah, blah. So I guess you do need the brick. Kind of silly. You shouldn't need the brick for the default. Okay, um, so label output will be... You did not type in what I... You know what? I don't think that'll fit. Not expected. How about that? So I click save. And when I run this application, I type in hello. Click the switch. Now it says why hello to you too. Ah, oh, it didn't fit in there though. So it didn't fit. But yeah, that's what that does because the hello is true. If I type in hello with an F at the end, now you get the not expected because it didn't fall into any of the above cases that we were looking for. And you can make as many cases as you'd like. So I can copy this and then I can paste it and have it um, buy. And I can have it say, see ya, like that. So press F5 again. I type in hello, switch is why hello to you too, type in bye, it says see ya, I type in okay, not expected because it's not any of these um, uh, cases above. So you can have as many as you want. Uh, then the last thing, I gotta, I gotta stop saying uh, and you can also use numbers as well. Now of course with numbers, that's a little bit different, so I have to go double, uh, I'll just have it say input is equal to convert whoops dot to double oh excuse me it has to be um, an int yeah that's the thing when you're using select case you have to make sure it's an integer so I'm gonna go int I'm glad I remembered that and that would have been a pain if I didn't to figure out if I didn't remember that okay so we have input here now if we type in input here, let's see what happens. Now, when you're checking the input, make sure that these are integers right here. So if they typed in 100, we can type in, or have the response be perfect score. And let's say they got a zero. We can have the label output say, too bad and the default will be anything else go f5 and let's see here you type in 100 so perk score going zero too bad 50 not expected now the last thing i'd like to show you really quickly is what if you want to check for chars so i'm actually going to make this a char now and what if you want to check for both uppercase and lowercase so I'm gonna go convert dot to char. So I haven't shown you this one before, but it works. So we're gonna go user input. What if you want to look for? You know what? I'm just gonna do this really quickly. So single quote a and single quote f, something like that. So we'll have this come out instead. So let's get rid of this completely. I click uh, save all and let's run this. So if I put in a lowercase a, we get the perfect score, we put an f, we get too bad. If we put a capital A, we get not expected. But it's still an A. What gives? Or in order to fix this, you can actually throw in a case up here, uh, single quote capital A, single quote colon, as such. You just do it like that and it will check for both at the same time or for either one to be true basically. So you throw in A, you get perfect score, you throw in lowercase, you still get the perfect score. So that's really, really, really cool. So bear that in mind. So you can go capital and lowercase that way. And that's about all I wanted to show you for this tutorial. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I'll see you next time.